From the very talented Andrew Haig, the man behind Weekend and 45 Years and Lean on Pete, comes his latest, All of Us Strangers. I am going to talk about this movie in a way that hopefully does not spoil anything, because there's a whole lot going on here, yes. and you're going to want to have to have a conversation about it afterward. So yes. A, don't go by yourself to see this. Go no. with a friend, go with a boyfriend, girlfriend, someone, um, because you're going to want to talk about what's happening here. <laughs> and we're going to try really, really hard not to spoil a thing, because I want you to have all of the discoveries that we did we had a little talk before we started this about what's a spoiler and what's not. So we're going to try really, really hard. I'm trying to write you back to at the moment. How's it going? Strangely. We can say this for sure. Andrew Scott is a writer living in a high rise in London. And it is one of these places that, you know, you see so many high rise buildings, there's so much new construction where it looks like nobody really lives there, right? right. Like there's so, so many condos. Who's going to live in them? So this is a building that is pretty much totally essentially empty. And he is sad. And we, we get a feeling of isolation from the very beginning. Just the, the way that it's shot, you get his sense of being alone in a massive place in terms of his view of, of the city of London. And then one night he gets a knock on his door. It is a gentleman who lives on the lower floor, played by Paul Meskel. And he is cute and handsome and flirty and suggests like maybe I should come in and we should have a drink and Andrew Scott's character says no I don't think so and they have a brief kind of awkward back and forth and that's the end of that for now but this one encounter this one brief moment of humanity for him sparks something and it inspires him to write he's this stuck writer he starts writing about what we learned to be his childhood home in the 80s in suburbia he takes the train out to the suburban town where he grew up and we have a really great sense of place just like with the musical choices i feel throughout mm. it's, it's so 1987 yeah. um where it's like bronski beat and pet shop boys frankie and erasure <laughs> and, and frankie goes to hollywood right so whether or not he knew he was gay as a teenager in the 80s, his musical his choices... His record collection did. Right. <laughs> the Telltale Music Collection. So, mm. um, so he goes back to his childhood home, and it should be empty in theory, but there are his mom and dad, and they look exactly the same as they did in the 80s. They are played by Jamie Bell and Claire Foy. And it's about how... It's almost like a magical kind of portal that he crosses through to re-enter the home ex as exactly as it was in the 80s when he was a teenager. And his parents are still there. And he has conversations with him that he wished he could have had earlier. And I kind of don't want to say any more. Um, but what I will say is that it occupies this incredibly delicate kind of ethereal place where the details are specific and they are rich and the emotions are deeply felt. But it's almost like suspended in air, suspended in time, this place, this, this, like a, this membrane that he crosses when, when he's back with them again. Everyone's totally lovely in this. Andrew Scott's heartbreaking in this. And, and to watch him like slowly re-blossom and come out of this funk that he has been in is very satisfying. Um, he and Paul Mescal have a lovely, flirty relationship with each other. Sexy oh, as hell. Crazy chemistry, yes. Crazy chemistry. Um, we've been recapping fellow travelers on our Patreon. And the... The frankness of their conversations and of their sexual encounters reminded me quite a bit of that, just in terms mm. of the honesty, but also the tenderness and the desire to be close, but the reluctance to to let your guard down and all those conflicting emotions all at once. But mostly they're very, just very, very hot together. <laughs> um, Claire Foy and Jamie Bell are both quite lovely. And um, there's so much I want to say that I can't. <laughs> Just I know see this, this movie. is a movie that you have to kind of talk around. I, I will say it is it is a beautiful portrait of longing mm -hmm. about the things that you want and may or may not ever get to have. And I think there's it's kind of an adjunct to the coming out movie, where there are a lot of people who don't get the chance 
to let their parents know who they are because like in, in in the case of this guy like his parents died when he was young and he was still figuring out his life in other times like that conversation doesn't happen and then like you know one or, one or both of your parents dies or, or the, the, the 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 child dies or whatever and they don't get to like have that moment of of putting it all out there and so his need to be able to have his parents know who he is as an adult to know the person that he became is so palpable that it manifests itself in this story and it's really moving and it's really powerful i mean like for example like dave never got to meet my mother you know mm -hmm. she died when i was in college and i never came out to her because i was still in the closet at that point and so yeah there is that 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 ache that can never quite be fulfilled of these opportunities that you are deprived and it's not just a gay thing, but I think it definitely, you know, it's it's a specific thing that 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 yeah. gay people have this moment where they go from from not telling the truth about themselves to telling the truth about themselves. And if you don't get to ha have that with the people who are closest to you, you always wonder how it would have gone. You always lament the fact that they didn't really know you all the way through. And so that is really suffused here. And then you have the relationship between Andrew Scott and Paul Mescal's character, which characters, which is so open and honest and, and mm -hmm. sexy. Yes. But also I think you're right. They do share a lot. It's, it's more, it's almost like a dramatic version of what happens in bros, it, you know, where yeah. those guys are kind of talking about like how the way they were treated as gay people or even potentially gay people sort of stifled their ambitions or like made them behave in certain ways. So all of that stuff that Haig is unpacking here is really great. I mean, he's adapting a Japanese novel, which is apparently more of a like scary ghost story mm -hmm. where like, you know, ghosts of the past and they, they, you know, they want terrible things from you. And he sort of took out the scary stuff and just sort of made it more about connection and nostalgia and, and all of that stuff. And I, I my, thing with this movie is that I think that both of these stories are so powerful, but they never quite meet no. for me in a way that I know the movie wants them to. And I'm the weirdo in this because almost everybody I know who's seen this movie has seen it multiple times and weeps every time. Uh -huh. Like people just love this movie when they I love this movie. I can see that. <laughs> and, I, and it didn't hit me that way, even though like this is totally the kind of movie that would. And, and I'm a huge, huge fan of Andrew Haig's work. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I, in six months from now, maybe I'll look at it again and it'll just be, hit me like a, a Mack truck and I'll get what it is that other people are getting out of it. But even without that utter sense of catharsis, there are so many moments in this movie that are so unforgettable. All four performances, like you said, are just so like pitch perfect. Mm -hmm. um, there's just there's uh, I, I'm not completely on board here, but boy, I really love so much of what this movie is doing. There's a line where Claire Foy. See, he, he, he's like taking off his shirt because he's come in from the rain and he's just going to throw his clothes in the dryer. And she sees him and she goes, Look at you. You were just a boy. And now you're not. And I'm like, <laughs> So it's really touching in like really subtle, sweet ways like that, but also like really overwhelming ways, I, I yeah. think. And, um, and they do a lot with, with um, and the one I should mention, it was won our Best Screenplay Award from last yes. year, our LA Film Critics Award. So what they're doing is really tricky here in terms of its structure. Yes. Um, but the performances make all that make sense. It could have just been like a cerebral exercise in like, sure. ooh, what <laughs> if? But like Andrew Scott is so heartbreaking in this and, and so true and has such a giant arc because when you first see him, he's so closed off yeah. and so almost numb. And so the level of emotion he allows himself to experience by the end is really, it's shattering. Yeah. It's he quite was, beautiful. He, he was one of our lead performance runners up. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of love in the room for him. He was great. And like Jamie Bell and Claire Foy, you know, have to navigate some tricky territory too because yeah. like they have to make what is happening feel believable and real. Um, that's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, just believe me when I say that everyone's really, really great in this. And there's a lot into this, the cinematography that makes it feel kind of dreamy. Yeah. And uh, the use of like mirrors and reflections and window reflections and the train window reflection and mm -hmm. a lot that puts you in a mood of like feeling ill at ease and feeling kind of in a mysterious space, but in, it settles into a, a place of warmth and 
I don't know. And the emotional needle drops, while also being specific to time and place and, you know, sexuality, uh, <laughs> especially the Frankie Goes to Hollywood one winds up being like incredibly moving, I thought. Yeah. Uh, and, and and it it's a song that I always kind of thought of that in that way, but like I will now forever associate it with this movie also. Oh, that's and, sweet. And how the movie uses it. So what's your number then? I'm going to say like a 7.7, 7, but you know, oh. check, check back with me. I might, I, I might be even higher then, you know. I'd say like a, like a nine. Okay. It's really well done and really beautifully acted. Yeah. yeah I, I see it. <laughs> By all means, see it. Because again, I feel like I'm in the minority of people I know who really, really love this movie. The, the, on paper, this is the kind of movie that I would be gaga over. And I do love and respect it a great deal. I just didn't have the utter subsuming that i i think that so many people i i know have had and i didn't walk in with those expectations i i saw this very early on mm. and so um you know see it by all means see it see it for sure and subscribe if you have not yet because we are in award season guys and this movie will definitely be part of the conversation yes